The project in Serbia, it was an EU-funded project and it was to help the government to develop palliative care in Serbia. So it, it had many different components. So obviously education was a key component. Um, so in the three years we trained uh, over 1,500 health and social care professionals in different aspects of palliative care and then some in children's palliative care. We also managed to get palliative care integrated into the undergraduate curriculum for doctors, nurses and social workers. Um, and it was really exciting because it was the first course that ever that all of the universities have accredited together and accepted a handbook together. Um, we also managed to get palliative care accepted as a um, sub, uh, subspecialty um, within Serbia. So quite a lot happened in the uh, academic and education front, but also actually in developing services. So we helped to set up over 15 palliative care programs across the country, um, both within uh, facilities, within hospitals, but also at the primary healthcare level um, and in the communities. So trying to help set up uh, palliative care services and trying to develop a model of palliative care service delivery for Serbia, so including things like standards of care, um, audit uh, indicators, best practice guidelines, and also developing some palliative care materials in Serbian because uh, many of the nurses in particular don't speak English, so accessing palliative care materials has been difficult. So we, they now have handbook for palliative care in children, handbook for palliative care in Serbian, um, along with best practice guidelines. So it was quite an exciting project, um, also looking at things like legal issues, availability of uh, medicines. Uh, so in looking at the um, public health model for the development of palliative care, it kind of covered all areas of that. Um, in Malawi, um, in Uganda and across Africa, um, in working to develop palliative care, very much looking at that public health model. So looking at how um, palliative care is implemented, um, it, different models of care, trying to draw out best practices. Um, some of the work we've done with the International Children's Palliative Care Network is looking at what has made children's palliative care services successful in different countries in Africa. So trying to draw out what are the key components to a successful model. Um, so looking at implementation of services, looking at education, and uh, I've been involved in different aspects of education, both in terms of continuing education, education for volunteers, for uh, religious leaders, um, but also in terms of academic education at Makere University um, with uh, Hospice Africa Uganda. We run a BSc in palliative care and they're looking at developing a master's program. Um, so looking at education at different levels, looking at issues of drug availability, uh, availability of medicines, um, in particular opioids, and looking at some of the barriers and how we can uh, reduce those barriers. Um, and looking at uh, research as well. So I've been very fortunate because I've been able to work in various different aspects of palliative care and policy development. So one of the um, challenges for us, particularly in children's palliative care, is that there are not uh, that many pro um, education programmes available. And uh, often where the greatest need for education is, there are no um, education programmes. And also, obviously, there's a challenge of who will facilitate those programmes. So one of the, we, we did um, a needs assessment of all of our members, um, and one of the areas that we've been looking at is e-learning. So we set up an initial pilot programme, which was uh, based around the new pain guidelines from the WHO for children and uh, we undertook a pilot, uh, reviewed the results of that, and then we've been developing that programme further. So we now have, um, I think it's eight courses available, um, and because not everybody obviously speaks English, uh, we have those programmes available in various different languages, so in English, in French, Portuguese, Spanish, um, Serbian, Russian, and, and uh, we've just got this week here in India the um, Hindi translation, and somebody is translating it into Punjabi, and uh, we've just put up the first Mandarin modules and Arabic is on its way as well. So trying to make uh, children's palliative care programmes accessible to more people. Um, and the, the Netherlands, the Dutch and um, children's palliative care programme, they've taken this on board as well. Um, so 
one, one of the challenges is to have education that's accessible, not just in terms of actually being available, but also in different countries, the health professionals, particularly nurses, have different level of education. So as soon as you start having, say, a degree programme, many of the nurses don't meet the criteria to actually do that programme. So as the International Children's Palliative Care Network, we've been looking at making our training available at different levels. So for those who haven't got entry level to a degree or diploma, and for those who have, making um, putting them in touch with where they could do those programmes, and looking um, ahead at developing um, programmes at different levels for children's palliative care. You can access them, them through the ICPCN website, or if you just uh, Google ICPCN e-learning, the website will come up, and uh, you can register for the courses, they're all free of charge, and you can register online.